Hey, welcome. Hello and good evening. My name is Wolf Geppert. I am professor of chemical physics at Stockholm University, and I would like to heartily welcome you to this um, online version of our public talk. I would like to present a speaker from um, today, which is Mohamed Burenan. He has done his PhD actually at the Royal Institute of Technology in Swedish KTA, Kate Kortiho, in 2001. And after a postdoc at the Max Planck Institute in Garching, he became a junior fellow at this, from the Swedish Research Council, which is stayed for one year until he get promoted to a senior research fellow. There are only very few people who actually get this. And in 2007, he was promoted here at Stockholm University to associate professor and finally to full professor in 2011. Mohamed is a member of the Swedish Royal Academy of Sciences since 2015. And now, since 15 years, he is leading the group on quantum information and quantum optics at our physics department. That's, I think, enough for me. And the floor is yours, Mohamed. Uh, thank you, Wolf, for the, for the introduction. And I also thank you for giving me the opportunity to come and uh, talk and give a public lecture. Today, my public lecture is about uh, next generation of secure communication, what is called today quantum encryption. Encryption, today we are meeting our doctor online. We are uh, shopping online. We are meeting friends online. We are doing every, most of the things online. When we are trusting the communication link that we have. And, uh, and even today, most sensitive information, like for defense, banking, and finance, transport infrastructure sectors have long communicated through channels that cannot be intercepted by unauthorized persons. Today, also, different type of sensitive information are sent within and between companies and even our medical records are now electronically exchanged in a health service. All these systems protected through encryption. But today the encryption protocols are using powerful mathematical methods as RSA called uh, elliptic curves the security of these methods lie on the difficulty of solving certain mathematical problems. In fact, these problems remain difficult to solve. In the future, it's uncertain because increasing of computational power or people, you have people are smart and they could found a better algorithm. But today, quantum encryption or quantum mechanics enable us to new and proven safe method to solve the key transfer problem. Unlike today methods, what I call them classical methods, the security of quantum encryption is guaranteed by law of nature. It's not assuming that people have not have powerful computers or they are smart, not smart enough. But to do that, I will give you a brief introduction to history of encryption. You know, the encryption is as old as, as human beings. Then, invented in 50 BC, Caesar Schiffer, what is substitution cipher, have introduced by Julius Caesar. He simply take a text and simply shifted the alphabets. But this method is obviously not secure because we know that on languages like English, or Swedish, or French, or Italians, there are some structure and patterning in the world. By frequency analysis, you could simply guess what it was the shifting or the substitution in an alphabet. And that was discovered later, but then it was, this code was broken. Then another method, what is called in one time path, that is discovered by Verman in 1918, very recently, and this is a simple method. The encryption is simply saying if you have a, a string of bits, say plain, your plain text, and you are having a secret key that as long as your plain text, then you do an addition one to one 
between the bits of the plain text and the key, and you obtain a cipher text. Then the sender sends the encoded message to the receiver. The receiver simply do the end operation. He have the cipher text and a secret key, and then simply making an addition one to one, and he simply directly obtain the plain text. This method it is have been proven that is unbreakable by Claude Shannon. You know Claude Shannon. He is the father of information theory, and he is the one who has also showed that this method, what is very simple method, is symmetric key, but this method lie on assumptions. One of them is that the key have to be random. Otherwise, if it have some structure, one can simply discover what it was the text. The key have to be private. What means private? It simply is belong is have only shared between the with authorized persons, like who is want to exchange us, and then is shared, means that the sender and receiver have to have the same key. And that is the only method that is unconditionally secure. Unfortunately, this method is simply not practical for many reasons. One of the many reasons that the key have to be sh shared, meaning that the two parties have to meet or to have use as a trusted messenger. To, ex to share the key. The other problem with this method that is simply the key can be used only once. And that's why this, this method is not used in practice. But with this only known method that is unconditionally secure. Then in the time we know that there are other methods, you know, that they are more developed, but they are based on, on the similar methods as before. What is simply electromagnetic machines? They are simply machines that have been developed during the first and the second world war, like Enigma, Tipax, that Enigma is a German one, and Tipax that she developed in England, and Purple developed in Japan. These are method, they are machines, but the problem that if one found this one of these machines, simply he inverse engineering and found how the code was this, how the, uh, the code is done, and simply one can break the codes. Then these hardware methods, they have been abandoned because they are simply not, they are easy to encrypt. Once you have access of one of these machines, then you simply uh, and, uh, break them and found a way how they work, and you can listen all the communication, encrypt all the communications. But there are people have moved now from, say, mechanical or hardware uh, methods to more algorithmic method. And the one that it was developed in the 70s, in IBM, what is data encryption standard, is simply use a uh, symmetric key algorithm for encryption of digital data. This method was using a uh, key length of uh, 56 bits, but unfortunately, the DS, DS is was an incorrect machine containing one th and this example 1856 1, customer chips and they use break force method. What means break force method? Simply try, 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 try on this machine are fast and try all possible keys until they found the key. That is simply a method. And then it had been broken in 1999. It was a competition and then the distributed net and electronic frontier. Uh, foundation collaborate to, to publicly break the DS key and it took them 24 hours and 15 minutes. Of course today one can have, we have more powerful methods uh, or mathematical and uh, powerful computers, this time could be much shorter. They have been developed another method but the same idea, they use symmetric uh, uh, key and then an algorithmic way, say linear combination and uh, permutation of uh, an algorithm, such a way that the, the, they develop what is called advanced encryption standard. It was developed in 2001, but up to now, this not break, break people have not break this method, but there are people uh, trying and trying and trying. It's not means that is secure. Or if one have found already the algorithm or the way to, or the way how to do it, they will probably not tell you. Uh, but another method what is used mostly in our computers today and on communication is what is public key encryption. 
The public key encryption, it was developed in the 70s also. What is, each user has two immutually inverse keys. The encryption key is, is a pub, published, and the decryption key is simply a keep it secret. Anybody can send a message to Bob, but only Bob can read the message. Most widely used in this method are is called RSI algorithm based on difficulty of factoring of product of two large numbers. We know that in mathematics, if you give me two large premium numbers and you ask me to calculate the product of them, then it's easy, I simply multiply them. But if you give me the number and ask me which two premium number this number is, the product of them is equal to this number, it's a very, very hard problem. And I can give you an example. The best known conventional algorithm requires a solution time proportional to this equation here. Say for P and Q of the premium numbers of uh, 65 digits long, then the time needed is one month using cluster of, uh, of workstations. But if P and Q become 20 digits, then the time required for so founding the, the factoring this uh, factoring is, is an astronomical number. Means that this is a way this method is secure. But unfortunately, today, in 1994, 90, 90, Peter Shaw from ANT Bell Labs showed that in principle, quantum computer could factor a very large product of frame number in seconds. And short algorithm, a time is computational complexity is here, and means that all the method that based in RSA and means that our Ker the Kerberos and all methods are used today for encryption is simply become not secure if the quantum computer will be built. Now, that I, after I give you an introduction and an history, this is also a table was summarizing. The history of crypto today, I have told you about one time pad that is impossible to break. I have told you about uh, machines, hardware ma methods, and also algorithmic method, and we are there. And uh, now I will tell you about more about quantum encryption. But before that, I, we know that we are all the classical communication used is based on bits and of all information exchange simply is transferred to bits and, and send and simply decoded in uh, from the string of bits and so on. And then the information simply that is zero to one are simply uh, encoded and you know information by itself is not will fly or from one point to another but it need a carrier a physical system that you encode this information to it, on it, say an electrical pulse or a light pulse. And then, for example, you took zero volt for zero bit and one three comma uh, three volt for, uh, for one, and simply you string these bits. And the other side, the receiver have a voltmeter or the detector can to say if it was zero and one. Then the sender is a pulse generator or an amplitude uh, modulator. The channel could be a cable, could be free space, like a, a wireless communication, could be an optical fiber, and the receiver could be a detector. And then we are done. And we use, and then we have all mathematical tool, thanks to Shannon, and we all have those together. But now, this is the history of uh, classical. But now, in early century, the quantum mechanics started and thanks to great men like uh, Albert Einstein, who discovered photoelectrical effect, Max Planck have shown that energy is quantized, and then my, Niels Bohr, who showed that atomic uh, model for an atom. And also, in the same time, to these ideas and concept on quantum mechanics was also a mathematical formalism was developed by Werner Heisenberg, who showed the famous uncertainty relations and then Erwin Schrödinger, who showed his famous Schrödinger equation to solve the problem, physical problem, quantum, uh, soli given a solution for uh, for uh, physical system. And in the same time, as I say, also during this time, also the information theory and computation have de de been developed through also two great men, Claude Shannon, who developed uh, the the information theory. And also Alan de Turing, who show us also how the computer will work. 
all these are give us the, all the, the things. But this have led to technology. Thanks to the model, Bohr model for atoms, people have developed semiconductors. Semiconductors is a valence bound and conduction bound. Rx corresponding, for example, exactly the mapping to a ground, ground state and excite of an atom. And you have, you have transition or energy band, exactly that, the, exactly the maps to the energy between two level and atomic levels. These semiconductors have led to first transistor on 47 and also have led this uh, integrated circuit in 58. And then after that we have also developed the laser and later we have developed also the, the first laser diode. All these things thanks to quantum mechanics. Then also this, all these basic cons devices have been leading to in our technology today, what I call the quantum technology, but I call the first revolution of quantum technology. We have the quantum uh, we have uh, communication, the internet, we have been able to build fast computers, we have to have e IT security, we have medical imaging, laser cutting, internet of things, and so on and so on. All these things because we have simply have quantum mechanics. Now, but we have limitations today because we're reaching the limits. Remits, one of the limits we're reaching that the processor getting uh, smaller and smaller and smaller, we not neglect quantum mechanics anymore, the effect of quantum mechanics. But we are also limited because of the need for more powerful computation and for simulation, the needs are more and more demanding. The imaging, we are limited by the diffraction limit. We cannot image smaller and smaller things. We are also cannot do sensing because we are limited what is called the standard noise limit. Because if the noise is, uh, if your signal is lower than this noise, we cannot simply measure it. IT security, as I say, is l secure under assumptions. But are it possible to overcome these limits or not? Yes, it is possible. Because what we have done before, thanks to the not understanding of that an atom is have a ground state and excite state, say correspond to or, uh, or spin up or spin down for an electron. Now we use something what we have not used before. Quantum mechanics not allowed us to simply to have only to the, the ground state and, and excite state of an atom or say a horizontal and vertical polarization photon, but quantum mechanics allowed us to have a superposition means that for an, L, an atom or electron could be in the first uh, an excite state in superposition of to be also in ground state. Or this, for example, here an, an, an and fo uh, photon could be in superposition to be an H or V. You know, this famous uh, cut is dead on li in life, you know, the famous cutting. That's how exactly. We have not at all, when we are building all this, what I've shown you, all this technology, lasers, transistors, integrated circuit, we have not used superposition yet. Now the second revolution, we use superpositions now, and then this is what we do now. Now, as I say to you before, thanks then we will see how now we do the second revolution. Second revolution, change the communication, change us also how to make encryption with the new sensors, with the new imaging devices, a new type of computers, more powerful ones. Then, this I told you that quantum mechanics now allowed me to have superposition state. Also quantum mechanics, I can do measurement in quantum mechanics. For example, here I have an H photon. It will be transmitted through a polarizing beam splitter with probability one. And then if the photon have vertical polarization will be reflected. But probability one means that I can distinguish between horizontal photon and vertical photon. This is exactly the analog of stern gerlach experiment. stern gerlach experiment, if you have beam of atoms, then stern gerlach if you apply magnetic field, then, uh, then, uh, uh, then particles will have spin up, they go up, with spin down, they go down. Here's exactly the analog to that. We also could, but suppose that you have a polarized photon and, vert and uh, diagonal polarization, and you have only one photon. 
Then what happened? Then this photon, because this uh, of is diagonal exactly at 45 degree, then you have probability half to be transmitted and probability half to be uh, to be uh, to be reflected. And we don't know a priori before if the photon will be transmitted and or reflected. And the outcome is completely random. But there are way I can turn my polar, uh, like in staring at luck, you turn your uh, uh, um, magnetic field here. I can also turn my polarizer, and I could make it such a way that the diagonal will be uh, will be trans uh, will be transmitted. Suppose I have vertical and horizontal, my frame will be look like that. But if I simply have diagonal polarization, I simply turn my polarizer my uh, my polarizer this way. Such way it will be always transmitted. But assume now, of course, if then quantum mechanics always, if I give you two states that they are orthogonal, the state if they are orthogonal, I can always always in mathematics, you know, in mathematics you have two vectors, one is vertical, one is uh, vertical, one is horizontal. You can always say this is the horizontal, or this is vertical. But it, it's same if they are like that in quantum, then or, then quantum state are represented by vectors, and if these vectors are orthogonal, I can always distinguish them. But suppose I give you two vectors, one like that and one like that, at 45. It's no way for you to distinguish because this one, it, this one have a component here, but this one also ha half of the time will be also this way. Then it's impossible to distinguish between two st quantum states that are represented by two, two vectors that they are not orthogonal. And that's very important qu property in quantum mechanics. There are no quantum measurement is capable of distinguishing no orthogonal state. If the information, what is very important now, if the information is encoded in this way, yeah, you can read it. But if the information is encoded this way, it's impossible for you to read it. And that's what is using in quantum encryption. It encode my information in some state that they are not orthogonal is no way for anyone could found the device, whatever he turned it, it's impossible for him to found to found them uh, to detect which state was used or extracting information. The other important things in quantum mechanics, what is called the no cloning theorem. If I give you unknown quantum state, I ask you to to copy it is impossible in quantum mechanics. There's no way in quantum mechanics to copy quantum states. It's impossible. Meaning that even M a spy want to uh, copy the state, right, what is sent, uh, the information encoded on it, then it's impossible for him to simply, simply copy the state, let the other one go to the uh, a trusted person, and then keep and wait until what they do, they, he will get the information. It's no way. Then thanks to this two, two property of quantum mechanics, then two states that are not orthogonal, it's impossible to, uh, to distinguish them perfectly, and then it's impossible to, put a perf to perfectly clone quantum and non-quantum states. These are two properties that's very important. The other property, what is also puzzling Einstein and so on, that is called the no-locality. No-locality means that there are states, quantum state, if, you share, if two parties are sharing these states, and then these two parties, if they make a measurement, it's impossible for someone to read the information uh, to, uh, so, sorry, it's impossible to, uh, to uh, is, they are uh, correlated, meaning that if one gets zero, the other one gets one. If the other one, uh, the Alice gets one, the other one gets zero. It's called entanglement. Entanglement is synonym for quantum correlation. It is shown that also it was debated in the beginning, are these quantum correlation are, could survive even two parties are separated, yes, but it has been shown now for many, for several experiments with distances of, of hundreds of kilometers, this entanglement still, or the quantum correlation still exists. Meaning that the outcome of a measurement in one side is correlated with the outcome of measurement of the other side. What is also being solving what it was discussed in, 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 in physics, what is called, it was a debate between our, if quantum mechanics was a local realistic theory or not, but it has been showing that through what is a Bell show, he give a scenario where, where he has been able to show how he can show that 
the nature is simply, if they are correlated state, the nature is simply cannot be described by local realistic model. And then, of course, it is, can be explained by quantum mechanics. And that's what is violation of Bell inequalities. And this is simply, if you violate Bell inequality, you have entanglement. Why is important this? Because you can see that two parties are separated. If they are correlated, means they will be able to share randomness to each other. It's like if one have, get a bit zero, the other one get a bit zero, the other one get a bit one, and the other one be, get a bit two. Then the entanglement allowed you to show correlation. And it's also very important that if you don't know what the other one have, have then your result is completely random. That's two properties that it have to co maximum correlation and maximum, maximum randomness. Now, if you move to practical now, say what is now, we talk about uh, that uh, we use quantum superposition and we use entanglement. What is, what quantum new device I can do? The first quantum device you can do, what is called quantum number, number, random number generator. That is a sample. Then what you do, for example, if you take a polarized photon at diagonal, and you let it through this uh, polarization beam splitter because it's at 45. What happened to it when it comes to the polarizer like that? What happened that he have exactly 50% to be transmitted or 50% to be reflected? Means that if I string of a, 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 a mini photon coming to this polarizer one after one, all of them are uh, diagonal polarization, then I simply every time. I got a click at a transmitted detector, I coded zero. Every time I get it at one, I sem uh, to reflected one, I get it, I call to one. This way, I simply generate a random number generator, right? It's in no way because it's advantage of this that the photon cannot be divided in two. You know, we have two choice or go this way or go this way. And then I build the first device, what is called the random number generator. It's so simple. Now there are companies who are selling these devices, but there are issue. I don't want to go into detail here, but uh, there are issue how to certify this is really random or not. And there are many developed methods, and then we can discuss if you like later. But this, what is important now, as I told you in the beginning, that the only method that is secure it is called uh, uh, one time uh, one time path and is simply secure and is not practical. Why? Because it's, I cannot generate the key at the distance. That's why. I have to meet you and to share with you the key. And the key is the one. Then we will see now, then quantum mechanics now, thanks to quantum mechanics, it allowed, to, allowed us to share a common and secret and random key. And that's what is called quantum key distribution. It's simply solving the problem of the key distribution between two parties that are located at different locations or different places. And then once I have the key, I use the one, one time path because it's 100% secure. Then it is simply, it was introduced by Bennett and Brassard in uh, 84, what is called BB84 for the name, and it's called prepare and measure. Simply, as I tell you, the information now, what Alice does, simply code her information, not like that, but in some state that they are not orthogonal, and start to send them to Bob. What Bob simply make a measurement and simply will, uh, will, uh, will, uh, will discover the key, and will share a key. Now, why this method as a secure, I told you, it is because it is impossible to distinguish between the orthogonal states and also that is not possible to f-strop f-strop and enter and and uh, get the get uh, get the key why because that's a basic in quantum mechanics every time you want to read the information of a quantum system you simply disturb it and then if you are able to measure the how much the disturbance then simply you will know if it was an f-stropper or not there for example they are i told you that there are no much cloning machine doesn't exist but they are what is called optimal cloning machine. It's the best machine available by, allowed by quantum mechanics. It simply gives you a copy, not exactly the same as the original, because it's forbidden by quantum mechanics, but it gives you a copy that is the fidelity, means that how close to the original to five over six. 
means that it will introduce an error of 1 over 6. Means what it does? It does that a, a, a trusted person that is communicating with each other simply estimate the error level. If they found around 1 over 6, they say, stop, stop, we're not communicating because somebody is there. Then this is a method how quantum mechanics allowed you, that's the advantage of that, allowed you to detect if there are any ifs proper or not. Then it's also been shown that is the best method for, 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 for a spy. But it turned later that people have developed more powerful methods for, for security. And it has been shown that even if Alice, uh, even if Stropper have quantum computer, what is doesn't exist, and we not give the if Stropper any technological or powerful or computational power, we not give him any limit at all, then what, have, what will happen, then he will introduce an error of 11%. Meaning that every time I have less than 11%, means I know my, sec my key is secure. Means this method of encryption is not just secure of technology of today, but even technology of tomorrow. Any technology, because this is based on law of nature, not about assumption of some mathematical methods or some hardware is based on the nature not allowed to have more uh, to uh, to um, allow that system will be uh, if a system it will try to extract information with it it will be disturbing it and you enter this error and then it was have been shown that if you have even quantum computer quantum memory what we not have them today this the the the, the key is secure if you have a level of uh, of uh, noise uh, then uh, less than uh, than 11% but there, I told you the other type of techniques, what is called using entanglement. Entanglement means two parties are sharing. I tell you they sh could share correlations, and this correlation allowed them to secure uh, a key and get a key. Now, how they know in this method that the key is secure or not? It is ba back to old story of, I told you in the beginning, there was debate between if quantum mechanics is simply described by local realistic model or not. It, now it is exactly in the mapping now showing that if you violate Ben inequality, what is simply it was something fundamental discussion about if quantum mechanics is uh, describing what you observe in nature or not, become a tool of check of, of security. Then if you're violating these Ben inequalities, you are sure your key is secure. Then I told you this method is simply one, there are different methods of encoding information. I told you, you need only two level system, right here, say polarization of a photon. Then you send the, pho the photon through the optical fiber or, uh, or why people use photon because they are best ones to, to fly. You know, they go fast, you know, you not use some, at some atom or something is hard to send. But photon, that's why used for communication, you know, optical fiber using light, you know. Light is go speed of, uh, is a very high speed, what is speed of light. Now, now, th this was, uh, again, at IBM, this is the first experiment, you know. It was 30 centimeter only, but still it have captured all the, all the ingredient for that, you know. They have been very careful in that time, even, even it's proof of principle experiment, but they have all the details, you know, tweaking all the numbers and using the detector, right detector, and so on. That was in 98. But during my PhD, you know, I started in this field, I mean, and I was, I am so proud that I was the first one to do really quantum encryption for, t for fiber. You know, that was during my PhD in 99, and it was really the first experiment done in the world for, for fiber communication at 1550 nanometer. This was done, and we have done different experiment here at 10 kilometer, 30 kilometer, and 40 kilometer, the spurred fiber in the laboratory. Then, of course, now they are, the, the field have explosed now, there are many activity around the world now. And then, then for example, in Europe, they have been like uh, experiment in optical fiber here. I show you the one that done in uh, Switzerland here. There are 15 or 14 kilometers. They have, this is the rack. You look like exactly rack in telecommunication, you know, in communication fiber. They look exactly the same, the same. Then it is also people not they used it for fiber. And now they use even uh, in, the, in the Alps, in, in uh, in German Alps, they use also, they use also an airplane, you know, that is Alice is here and Bob is in, uh, in the ground. Uh, 
and you can use other method you can the boat you can use that and there are many co uh, universities and companies are working on this then they are also now friend in china are taking it very seriously and now they are developing like a real network, you know, this network be between Beijing and Shanghai and on, uh, passing by, uh, by Haifei and so on in different cities. And this node is to about 2000 kilometers and it has 32 trusted relays, nodes, 31 links and metropolitan networks and so on and so on. They are building this network in China. In China also, they are also have been the first ones to send a satellite you know, satellite have this entanglement source and then the entangled source then emitting photon to go to one telescope and another one go to another telescope. And the distance were also around 1,200 kilometers between the two telescopes. Of course, here the rate is still very low and so on and so on, but still it is a proof of principle experiment and showing that uh, this is pos technologically possible. There also in Japan, there are many different experiments in Japan here, a network in Tokyo here, that they are also doing different uh, network and so on and so on. Now, of course, this system is now, they have a commercial product and they say like here, the ID contig here, look like inside, look like, like standard optical component here uh, and so on and so on. Now, of course, one can extend this to more not just between Alice and Bob, between two users, but you use it for many users, you know, like one, Ali, the boss is here, Alice want to not give the key just for Emil or Carol or David or Bob. She have to uh, uh, distribute it between her key, between, uh, uh, between the, her colleagues, such a way they only collaborate all together, they will able to reveal the, uh, the, the key of Alice. The subgroup of these people cannot uh, allow it to get the key or it cannot uh, get the key. This is simply used again entanglement, not between two parties, but we mean between, uh, between say here four parties. And they simply, we can, one can show they are correlation between the four, the four of them. If you know, if you know three, uh, the outcome of three, you can will be able to the, find the bit of the fourth one. They are here, we have developed a new method, also here, it was patented here, and we have been developing, not using entanglement, but using sequence of uh, a sequential uh, communication of a single qubit, and then it's much, really much simpler than what was used here. And then we also it, uh, do it in the laboratory here, where we show that here we have uh, five users, and then we show that uh, this is uh, this working here. Uh, another thing also, quantum systems, if you are not careful enough, that could be also hacked. Hacked not in theory, because theory is really based on quantum mechanics, but if you are not careful of your devices, you can simply uh, be, uh, be uh, you know, be hacked, you know. And that's one example of what we have been doing here, hacking Bell tests using classical light. I mean, we have been able to hack the system simply by using lasers because simply they are a way to attack the detector uh, and so on. Now to, to overcome this problem, they have a new method developed, what is called device, uh, measurement device and dependent quantum key distribution. It's like you not, you not need to trust the, 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 the devices, but uh, measurement devices, and then you, know, you have a new method instead, and this is overcome this problem. Another problem, what we have uh, been developing, that's also I talk about quantum encryption. What is another problem, what is also uh, quantum resources given advantage, what is communication complexity? Communication complexity, if you have two people give you, give them to X and the other Y and ask them to calculate the function of X and Y, and then what is the best way to do it, right? And it turned out that quantum mechanics give advantage on communication complexity. If you have a network, and everybody have some uh, database and you tell them, okay, collaborate, right, to achieve a common task. Okay, it turned out that if you use quantum resources, you can simply reduce the complexity and the cost for, uh, for achieving the task. Another one, what is called fault tolerant part uh, Byzantine agreement. That is also an, uh, a synonym for a liar problem. If you have a network of people and you detect who is was a liar, it turns out for classical system, if the number of faulty is higher than one third, 
it's impossible to get an agreement. It turned out if you use uh, quantum resources, it doesn't matter the number of fault, you will always reach an agreement. And that's really a prob uh, uh, interesting problem because it has an application of clock synchronization. If you have a network with different clocks and you want to synchronize them, some of the clocks are not, uh, are not really uh, faulty, and then it turns out that you can always achieve uh, synchronization. Uh, then we have also developed all these protocols, complexity problems, uh, Byzantine agreement, this uh, clock synchronization and secret sharing and we developed this uh, and we have uh, done experimental solution for quantum solution. Another thing what we have also looked at is how quantum mechanics could help you to play bridge. It turned out if you have to, uh, the bridge enough to have the north and the west play against uh, north, uh, north and south and then playing. You know, it, uh, we know that it's known that if you have the you, they are only, com you know, they bridge, they are allowed to communicate, but not fully, right? And then it turned out that in classical, if they are communicating with classical, the probability of succeeding is 70%, 75%, the probability of winning. But if they are uh, sharing entangled states, then the probability will go to up to 83%, meaning that using quantum resource, we can even play a bridge, uh, a bridge game. And we have been in contact with the Bridge International Association. And if the party will share entanglement, we are not breaking the rule of the bridge. You know, we are not breaking. It means that few people can play in with the bridge and they get probability of winning. And then there are also another things what is also famous and people uh, talk about it. What is quant teleportation? You know, and they're like in a movie of Star Trek. You know, there there are few, some person here, and then he simply teleports and other things. Then one could also tell, one, we are not teleporting photons, uh, humans, but we could teleport uh, a photon, right? Or this information content from one place to another place. And that is done in our lab also, that to how to teleport a, a, a photon from one place to another place. That we have also done that. And it have also, uh, not just because it's fun to do this, but it also have very uh, many applications on that. Then, uh, then I, I told you where we are. We are just in uh, Albanova, not far in Stockholm University. That's uh, Albano, Albano campus here. And that's, I think, a nice place, nice photo here for Stockholm. And then we are located there. And you are, of course, welcome to contact me. You have seen my mail in the beginning. You just come and you want to see the labs. And then we do quantum photonic. Uh, quantum photonics means we develop, you know, you cannot buy these devices. You have to make them yourself. Single photon detector, single photon emitter, multi-photon entanglement, integrated optics, and so on. We also play with quantum physics because the more you enter in quantum physics, the more you will learn, get advantage of the resource that quantum mechanics give you, right? If you're not understand it well, then it's, then it's not obvious how you use it. Uh, then the better you understand it, the better you use it efficiently. And then we do quantum information like uh, quantum encryption, quantum communication, and sensing, and so on. Then, uh, yes, this is the photo of the labs you need. You need to have lab to do these experiments. You have to have labs. You have also to, to have very good students to do this. You know, you, you cannot do it without this. Then uh, I'm proud to have very good uh, students and postdocs working with me. And then this is the labs. So we have different labs in quantum uh, foundation, quantum optics, communication, quantum nanophotonics, and so on. They are all labs. And uh, as I say again, you are welcome to come to visit us. Of course, you cannot do this without funding. <laughs> then I will really take the opportunity to thank uh, the Swiss Research Council and the uh, Knut and Alice Wallenberry Foundation and the Wallenberry Center for Quantum uh, Technologies. And of course, I like also to thank uh, Stockholm University for uh, CIPO. And thank you very much. Thank you. So did you have the Zoom link on? Yes. So as you know, due to the current situation, we will have the questions via Zoom. So I will start the Zoom session. And then you can actually ask your question either when, when you join the Zoom link, which is also on the website. Then you can come in and start the discussion. You can also enter the chat and enter your um, talk 
I, oh, sorry, oh, your, your question in yes. the Zoom group chat. So now Mohammed is also connected. There is one person connected. So let's see, let's wait a little bit if somebody comes in. But if somebody wants to ask a question already, please do so. And please, if you don't really talk, please mute yourself, because otherwise um, we have a back coupling, as I can hear already it happens. I don't see any questions at the moment. Let's wait a little bit. Maybe people need some time to come in. So it seems nobody is coming in. Let's give it a couple of minutes and if nobody comes in then that's it then. Then we can maybe allow the people to send in questions also via email. I would give it five minutes, and if there's nobody mm. coming, then we can pa can uh, conclude. But I don't really see any person coming in at the moment. Ah, there is somebody coming. So she asks, what, when do you think this will be everyday technology? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good question. It depends on which system we are talking. Then uh, quantum communication is uh, very close. I mean, they are a commercial uh, product, but still there are issues with them and uh, how fully secure and so on. But that's a question of... Uh, a few, uh, two, three, four years, it will be like they are an effort, as like I told you, in uh, worldwide. Now also, there are um, companies like uh, Google, IBM, and large company, they are investing a lot of money now. And then we have heard that uh, some last year, Google have introduced their first quantum computer. Uh, this quantum computer is still not doing any specific calculation, but still it is the first step. I could say quantum communication is closer, but uh, but I think quantum computer uh, one have to wait a little bit and also depend on which computer. I mean, if one would think about the universal quantum computer, is uh, one have to wait. But uh, the good news that if you are interested to test this quantum computer, simply you go to the internet and then you can book a time and you can use them. They are they have C4 how to use them. And there one is IBM have one, 
then this is the more advanced one I recommend you if you want to use uh, if you want to use the, this nice computer uh, quantum computer with well, a small one I mean they have like uh, uh, now I think that 20 processors or something like that is quite small uh, but still you do basic uh, basic calculation with it uh, if you want to quantum encryption then uh, uh, there are some companies sell device but I don't think so they are not fully secure but uh, yes it is uh, and then there are people working in what is called quantum sensors that they are also quite close also but that need uh, less less uh, less tech, uh, less uh, technological effort but I think uh, if you have asked me like three years ago I uh, could say oh, you have to wait so long but now I think uh, I think because the effort in China, for example, China is investing 2.5 billion dollar in uh, dollars on this technology, and also now Europe 1 billion euro, and so on and so on. Now I think one have to wait. We see, like one can to see in three four years to see what happened uh, now, because this is really the the field have never got as much as uh, uh, support as today. But I think one have to wait a little bit. Like for example, now Sweden also through the Vanberry Foundation give one, one, uh, one, uh, one billion krona, uh, and so on. I'm very optimistic now, ready for the future. Okay. Any further questions? Someone try to connect. Mm -hmm. mm. There is an iPad. Why, they, why do they call themselves iPad? It's very mm -hmm. strange. So I will give another question. Is another one here? That's, uh,